All right, and I've got our attendees jumping in here, which is great. Just make sure we got everything all set up. Okay, thank you guys for all joining us. Um, I'll get started as we've got the numbers rolling in here of, of people attending, but um, all right, welcome. Uh, for some of you guys, your first, some of you guys, your second panel uh, for the first annual Pursuing Careers in Healthcare and Bioscience um, career panel that we've got going on today. We're excited to have you all here and even more excited to be able to come together with so many really great partners across Kalispell, Flathead Valley, Northwest Montana to bring you some career information about uh, these super in-demand careers that are available um, right now. A lot of them are hiring as we speak uh, here in Kalispell. So to kick it off, my name is Kate Lufkin. I am the Director of Education and Workforce Development for the Kalispell Chamber of Commerce. I am the moderator for this panel today around bioscience and biotechnology. And we have four really, really wonderful individuals joining us today um, that have a great experience and extensive background in bioscience and biotechnology. And so without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to them uh, to introduce themselves, tell us a little bit about uh, where they came from, their background, and what they are doing now, because bioscience and biotechnology is a very broad um, spectrum of industry where you can go, all these different sorts of things you can do. And I think we've got four really different uh, perspectives on it here from you. So Chris, why don't you go ahead and kick it off? Let us know who you are. Uh, and then we'll go to Keith, Ruth, and then Avery. Go ahead, cool. Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Chris, um, and uh, I work for Fire Diagnostics here in Missoula, Montana. Um, a little bit about my background. I grew up in um, North Texas in the Dallas area, and that's where I went to high school. Um, I had a lot of fantastic high school teachers that really sparked my interest in science from biology to chemistry to physics, and uh, really loved it all. And while I was in high school, I uh, started doing some research at UT Southwestern doing um, urology research in a program called the STARS program. And it was just a, a nice little experience that, you know, further uh, got me interested in pursuing uh, science long term um, and was what helped me make my decision about pursuing science in, in college. So um, after high school, I, I went and got my undergraduate degree at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Um, I got my degree in biology um, and uh, started uh, my freshman year. I started doing uh, I started working and doing research at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine. And uh, throughout those four years, I got to work on a lot of really interesting projects and it helped. Uh, I learned all of the standard lab techniques that helped build the foundation to my science research um, from that point forward and got to work on some really cool things like human kidney regeneration projects, bone regeneration, a lot of stem cell research and um, stuff like that. Um, and after undergrad, I decided to take some time off from school and got a permanent position at the institute that I was working at. Um, during my undergrad and joined a regenerative medicine and cancer research lab. And uh, this is where I feel like I really uh, started to um, grow as a scientist. And this is where I learned a whole new array of techniques in the lab, got a whole new set of experiences. Um, this is where I learned a lot of advanced microscopy techniques. I got to do some really cool stuff with all sorts of different microscopes, uh, um, like creating 3D reconstructions of, of tumor tissue or bone or whatever, and, you know, creating these, these, these really neat uh, 3D videos that, um, I don't know, yeah, uh, I, 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 I became a little bit of a microscopy nerd. I uh, really enjoyed it. Um, I decided I need to, needed to, uh, I, I really wanted to, you know, um, go back to school and um, get my PhD. So, uh, I went to Johns Hopkins School of Medicine and got my PhD in biochemistry, cellular and molecular biology in the 
pharmacology and molecular sciences group. That's a very, try putting that on a business card or a resume. It's a, it's a mess. Um, but uh, Johns Hopkins is in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, it's a really good uh, medical school and uh, had a fantastic educational experience there. Uh, I learned more in that first year and a half than I think I ever learned in science uh, throughout the rest of my life. And it was uh, extremely rewarding, extremely challenging, but um, it was really enjoyable. And from there, I, I started my thesis work on doing more microscopy based uh, research, but um, I won't get into the nitty gritty of it, but like uh, it, it, just uh, being able to use uh, fluorescent proteins from, you know, like why jellyfish grow, uh, glow green and stuff like that. We can like use those fluorescent proteins and engineer these little uh, switches that react to cellular events and it causes fluorescence properties to change. And we can measure those to measure cellular events happening in real time. And uh, so that's what I did for, uh, it felt like forever. Um, <laughs> PhD feels like a really long time, but it's, it's, it's worth it. Um, and while I was in my PhD, I actually ended up in San Diego because my, my uh, I, I got my lab, my principal investigator, a PI, who's, who's like the boss of your lab, essentially, who leads your lab. She got a new position in San Diego. So I actually went to San Diego, um, finished out my research there uh graduated may of 2019 um and ended up joining fire diagnostics and um uh, as the director of research and development um and at that time i was leading all new like technology development technology acquisition um projects in the company um i moved to missoula montana um like fall of 2019 uh, and earlier uh, last year, in about February, I became the CEO of the company, um, and yeah, that's uh, and uh, then COVID happened, and uh, so typically, fire diagnostics, we 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 uh, focus on um, creating technologies to help us uh, help um, identify like biomarkers for diagnosing different diseases, um, such as neurological diseases like Alzheimer's or epilepsy to cancers. Um, we also have some projects in the agricultural industry. So we actually make the tools to detect these biomarkers and we also identify these biomarkers for these diseases. Um, and then when COVID happened, we, we took a dramatic pivot and um, started working on um, a solution to COVID testing um, in, particular to, in particular to help our community in Montana because um, we don't have a lot of the lab testing infrastructure that uh, a lot of other states do. Um, so we we did develop a, a, a novel COVID-19 diagnostic test, and we built a clinical diagnostic lab that has is basically a bunch of robots. It's really cool, a lot of, a lot of cool robots moving stuff around, and uh, and that's kind of what we're doing every day right now, um, doing COVID testing and. Um, it's been pretty awesome. We're really excited to be helping. So Great. That's, that's me. Great. Hey, Keith, do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, how you ended up and what you're doing as a student? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Keith. Um, I grew up in the Flathead in Kalispell ever since the second grade. Uh, I graduated Glacier High School in 2016, which now feels like absolutely ages ago. Um, and just recently, I transferred from FECC to uh, Montana State University in Bozeman. Um, and post high school, so I, uh, right out of the gates in 2016, I had absolutely no idea what kind of career I was interested in or what kind of uh, education I was even looking for. So I started courses at FECC um, and stayed local and realized that was probably the best decision to make uh, to be local and to, to figure out kind of at a at an early uh, well I guess try as early as possible to figure out what I wanted to do so that's where I met Ruth and became interested in uh, biotechnology and uh, in bioscience in general so um, currently right now though I am a biotechnology uh, of microbial systems major uh, my mi minor is so far undecided, 
stay true to my roots to being undecided on most things. Um, so either genetics or even microbiology. Um, but in general, I'm kind of just kind of really getting the ball rolling for my, my path into bioscience. Um, this upcoming summer, I am planning on uh, attending the Rocky Mountain Laboratories in Hamilton, Montana, which is an NIH facility. Um, and so that internship and uh, opportunity really like just happened. And so I'm really grateful to, to experience that, hopefully uh, coming up here soon. And um, yeah, I think that summarizes everything. I don't have such a long resume yet, but uh, yeah, I can kind of offer some, some of the aspects of starting into bioscience, I suppose. Great. Thanks, Keith. That's a fantastic segue to into Ruth. Uh, tell us a little bit about your role and your director position. Well, thanks. Um, so I got started in science. I mean, I have to say it's probably through my my parents. Uh, my dad's an electrician, but he is the kind of guy he was building computers back when you got Heath kits and <laughs> things like that. And so um, I got started with science fair. Um, I think a lot of kids get started that way. And in high school, I remember um, a couple of times I went to the regional science fair and then one time I went to the national. And I think that had an impact because it was held in San Diego and I'm from central Indiana. So to go from central Indiana to San, like I had no idea what life was like in, you know, on the coast. And it was an incredible experience. And part of that was um, we had, you know, displayed our projects, but we also got to tour a lot of the university labs. So we got to tour UC San Diego and some of the Navy research labs. And so it was like a whole world of what a research lab looked like. So um, I did have some incredible high school science teachers. I remember I got to borrow a microscope. I fell in love with microscopes really early. And so I would, you know, make hay infusions and look at, at protozoa. So I stayed in Indiana for my undergrad um, because it was financially the most feasible. And I would looked at Purdue and IU, which are the major universities, but I, I got a scholarship to a little four-year liberal arts college. And I think it was a good fit for me. I got to be a lab assistant, um, do undergraduate research. I did a couple research summers at the University of Michigan. And so I got to see kind of the, again, the kind of the combination of what it's like to be a student at a small school but then also um, do research at a larger institution. And so one of my professors um, had been to University of Michigan and he encouraged me to, for grad school, to think bigger and broader. And I kind of remembered, oh, I did really like that visit to California. So I applied to a lot of graduate schools and I um, got into University of California, Irvine. And being at the UC system, I don't think I realized what it meant. And even until I graduated, what it meant to get a a PhD from a University of California or from a major university, what that meant for my career. And the, I was in the Department of uh, Cell Biology, but I also had collaborators in the Department of Molecular Biology and Microbiology. And so early on, so I fell in love with microscopes, I fell in love with microorganisms, and I fell in love with immunology. And that was a really good time to be kind of growing up in immunology because it was a lot of the work on early work on T cells and T cell culture. And I was interested in parasites because nobody worked on parasites. So I spent a long time um, working on Trypanosoma cruzi, which is a parasite that's found in South and Central America. It's a major cause of heart disease. Um, there are no real effective treatments and there's no vaccines. And so I worked on, a, on projects related to vaccination. And so I did that through my graduate work, um, postdoc work at, I stayed at UC Irvine, but I, then I had a chance to start teaching at the community college. And initially it was, you know, get a little, little teaching experience, um, but then I realized how much I loved working with people coming into that system. So kind of that combination of teaching and research um, kind of blended together. And um, so I was able to get a full-time job at Saddleback College, which is a, a large community college in Mission Viejo, California. And I also was still doing research. Um, and so in the early 2000s, my husband and I decided to relocate to Montana and I sort of took a break for a couple of years. And then the opportunity came for me to start teaching at Flathead Valley and that opened up to a full-time position. And along the way, the, the biotech field was growing. And even when I was at Saddleback, um, we didn't have a lot of equipment for the community college. 
So I would borrow equipment from the lab. And I remember one time I just put a bunch of stuff in the trunk of my car and we did something, some really easy molecular biology method. We let to look at DNA, you know, with fluorescence. And I just remember we only had like one gel box and one for like 30 students, but everybody was gathered around. And I was thinking, this is something we really need to do. And so I started writing grants when I was still in California. And then when I came to FBCC, um, I wanted to open up the biotech avenue because there's so many areas of biology that are impacted by biotech. And so really incorporating DNA science. And so I was unfortunate to get incredible support from the college and we've been able to get several uh, grants from the National Science Foundation to improve our um, equipment and to improve our technology and to add that program. And so through that, I we developed a biotech class, which Keith has been a part of and some other students and that has grown and it's grown into um, the high school as well. And so now we have dual enrollment classes for biotech and allows students to, to get acquainted with this, this field and all the ways it can grow. So along the way, I've had so many wonderful people help me and um, I hope that I can sort of pay that back in some way by giving some students the opportunity to see where there are avenues for, for work and um, ways to, to grow their career and do some really exciting things in, in the field. Great. Hey, really quick before we jump to, to Avery, any of you guys that are on and watching today, um, please feel free uh, to drop any questions that you guys have in the Q&A box that's going to be at the bottom of your screen. We have the chat and the raise your hand function disabled today. Um, so if you have any questions for any of these guys, drop them in the Q&A box and we'll be sure to get to those. Well, we will do our best to get to those. Um, and so last here with our quick introductions, uh, Avery, go ahead. Thanks, Kate. I'm uh, Avery Sonnenberg. Uh, when I was in, in high school and trying to figure out what I wanted to do for college, um, well, really what I was spending a lot of my time doing was playing video games. Um, and the computers that we had were never good enough, so, you know, play video games. So I always wanted to make better ones. So I would, I would try to, and I didn't have a lot of money, so I'd figure out how to buy the cheapest parts that I could tweak and twist, and I'd read all this stuff online about how to do it and overclock everything. Um, so I got really into computers and how they worked and all that stuff. So when I went to undergrad, I went for electrical engineering uh, and I went to Rochester Institute of Technology, which is about two hours away from where I grew up in, in Western New York. I grew up in, in just a small town and that was kind of the closest uh, good engineering school. So I went there and I did a bunch of internships uh, while I was there as part of the program. I did an internship uh, working on like a test and manufacturing line for uh, encrypted military radios. I did an internship on like an optical inspection system for gas pipelines. It's also, if you've ever seen a movie where the FBI sticks a little like thing underneath the door to look around, that's like the covert version. Most of them that they sell have a big light in them that's really bright. Um, uh, I did an intern internship working on uh, kind of the chips that power cell phone towers. And that was all, all very interesting to me, but I, I uh, was more interested in sort of the, the biological and medical applications of electrical engineering. Um, so I, I applied uh, when I would decided to go to grad school, I applied to bioengineering programs. Uh, and then when I went to was in, in California, which after living in New York until I was, you know, 22, uh, was a very big change to go live in San Diego. Um, very, very different place than where I grew up. Uh, but I got into a, into a lab there. I had to learn chemistry and biology, biochemistry, molecular biology, um, which I had never been uh, interested in really before. Um, but once I started thinking about chemistry as just you know, tiny machinery, uh, it made a lot more sense to me. Um, so I got into a lab there where I was actually using um, electric fields. So kind of like my electrical engineering stuff, I was using electric fields to pull uh, biomarkers, so information from cells out of samples to do diagnostics. So we were actually trying to get the DNA, the information from cancer cells, we were looking for that in people's blood using uh, you know, a plastic cartridge sandwiched on top of basically a computer chip where the wires were all exposed and we could do interesting things with electric fields. Um, so that was a, a very cool project uh, for, for my PhD work. And, and like Chris said, uh, a PhD takes a very, very long time, it, it feels like. Um, but it's you, know, you see the value in it later. Um, so after that, I, I moved to North Carolina. Uh, that move was mostly because my, my wife, who I had met in grad school, uh, got a really good postdoc in North Carolina. So I was in, in Research Triangle Park, not that far from where, from where Chris went to undergrad. Um, I worked at a, 
a couple of companies doing diagnostics there. The second one is a, a very big global medical device company. And what I was doing there is I was looking at um, small companies and doing technology evaluations to see if the big company wanted to you know, buy that small company and, and put their technology in, in one of the big company's products. Um, so I got to look at a lot of cutting edge you know, R&D uh, uh, projects that involved you know, uh, molecular biology as well as engineering. Um, so that, that was very cool. And then kind of out of the blue, uh, a friend of a friend called me up and, and talked to me about a new opportunity, which was here in Montana. So I'm, I'm in Whitefish now, um, which is where Two Bear Capital is, uh, which is where I work um, now and have for a little over a year. And, and what we do is kind of similar to what I was doing at the big medical device company. We look for, for small companies that have interesting technologies uh, and, we, and we put money from you know, investors that, that give us uh, their money to invest because we're sort of the science and technology experts. And we put that money into smaller companies. And, and along with that investment goes kind of our expertise at, at solving some of the problems that we see, you know, over and over again um, in, in small companies. So uh, we're expert problem solvers. We, we feel like we work, you know, sort of for these small companies too. Um, and help help them grow and really help them solve problems. And actually, Chris Chris and I know each other because Fire Diagnostics is one of the companies that that Two Bear Capital uh, has invested in. So I've been working very closely with them, and they have been doing just amazing work uh, addressing kind of the, the COVID crisis and and completely changing their path, at least temporarily, to uh, to becoming a, a clinical diagnostics lab. Um, which until then there there was no sort of high throughput automated robotic uh, uh, sample processing for, for COVID testing in Montana. Almost every other state had high throughput testing capabilities, uh, except for Montana, until until Chris and Fire Diagnostics decided that, that that's something that they would put in place. So, Great. So the four of you guys have very, very, very different backgrounds um, and experiences. So it's a little hard to compare here, but um, Chris, uh, in about under a minute, will you tell us just what sort of a, an average day for you looks like, looks like, excuse me, right now? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I do a lot of management. Um, I'm not really at the bench anymore. Um, I, it's, it's basically like my responsibility for, to provide the vision for the company and make sure that everything occurring on a day-to-day -day basis is getting us to our vision and, and achieving our goals. So I get to work with all of our different team members and the, the little mini teams, like so the operations, the, uh, the clinical lab, the research lab personnel, um, constantly collaborating with them in order to solve problems, decide on what projects we're going to work on. Um, and get things done to accomplish our goals for all of our projects. So a lot of meetings, a lot of collaboration, um, and uh, a lot of bigger picture kind of uh, decisions to make as opposed, I, I still am, I can't like 100% go away from some aspect of bench work or science. So I'm still involved in the research and development of new technologies and stuff. And um, I just, I need some of that. So I, I still, spend a small amount of my time day to day uh, involved with some of the, those smaller details, but yeah. Great. That's actually a pretty good segue here. Hey, Ruth, would you talk a little bit about the skills um, that, that somebody could have that would make them great in the bioscience, biotechnology field? Chris kind of hit on the fact that you can really pull in, you know, management skills as well, but um, <laughs> what else do you see that would make somebody a good fit for this? There, as you can see from everybody that's on the panel, there's so many different backgrounds um, and interests. Um, but I would have to say, um, I think the biggest thing is, is curiosity and wanting to solve a problem. And there's so many problems that, that these industries, whether that's um, making, you know, trying to develop a cure for a disease or develop a new vaccine or develop a, a diagnostic instrument. I mean, we have so many conditions. Um, that are not being addressed. And, and this year, especially, everybody's everybody that I know in research is pivoting to COVID if they can. But at the same time, there's still so many things that are uh, that still need to be done. So I think there's so many skill sets people can bring. And, and it, I think everybody mentioned it's helpful to know and like to work as a team. People seem to think of science as being very isolated, but it's really a lot more fun and a lot more productive when you work together. And if people have different backgrounds, 
So, so whatever background you have, there's something you can bring. And it doesn't necessarily have to be science. There could be the technical side or the legal side or um, the, you know, the, the business management side. There's so many things to bring. So I think it's a really exciting area and lots of opportunities. Great. Hey, Avery, I have a question for you um, just about the role that bioscience biotechnology has played on the pandemic. Um, and in what roles uh, has bioscience and biotechnology really been at the center, um, whether that's on the diagnostic side, on the vaccine side, et cetera? Yeah, so it's, it's a combination of, you know, everybody has been working on all these you know, solutions to, to human health issues in, you know, sort of the background for a very long time. Um, so that sort of infrastructure and the desire to solve those problems, that's always been there. Um, it's not necessarily visible on a day-to-day -day basis to everybody um, that we're kind of pushing the, the scientific ball forward every day. But, you know, like, like Chris and, and, and like Ruth said, a, a lot of people um, anywhere sort of tangentially involved in this have completely turned their focus to COVID. And it's not just, this is the new sort of interesting area. It is, it's not because there's, you know, grant money or federal funding. It's, it's, I have this scientific skill set, knowledge base, these connections. I have these instruments in my lab. I have the know-how. If I help, if, if I put my, my mind and my team towards this, it will help. I, I feel sort of a moral obligation to do that. And, and that stems from the fact that people get into this industry in general because they want to solve these problems, because they want to help human health. And I, I hope that one of the things that comes out of this is that people, um, more people are excited about going into these into these areas, into these careers, because they are so important and and sort of at a at a high level culturally, I hope that we start to value all of all of these ideas more scientific progress. I hope there's more funding. I also hope you know we we give more uh, support and and to you know all the all the healthcare workers that are kind of on the front lines implementing this stuff that that these people uh, in the biotech industry come up with. Great. All right, it looks like we have time for about one more question. Um, so I wanna bring it back around to the student side of things here uh, and pick on our friend Chris, or uh, Keith, excuse me. Um, Keith, can you just talk to us for a quick minute about um, what kinds of classes somebody could take, um, whether that's, you know, in your experience at FECC or moving now towards MSU, um, just what kinds of things are involved in the curriculum? Yeah, absolutely. So it's really impressive how many courses are available in this field now, especially. I'd say 10, 20 years ago, it would not, the curriculum would not look the same at all. Um, really what was in, a really incredible course that I took was just an introduction to biotechnology. Um, I took that without having any previous ex uh, experience or anything or even desire to go into the field. And by the end of that year, we had cloned a gene in arugula. And that was something that like, I thought was only in science fiction, really. Um, and so like, and that was a 100 level course that really brought me into this field and just ignited that excitement for it. So uh, there are biotechnology courses. Um, there's uh, immunology, microbiology. There's so many different uh, I mean, computer sciences that are in application to biotechnology. There are so many different courses. And of course, like this panel represents, there's so many different paths um, that really you can, you can pretty much take uh, such a wide variety of courses and still fall under the umbrella of biotechnology. So yeah, I hope that answers that. Great. Yeah, this is an interesting panel compared to a bunch of the other ones that we're running today because you can go in so many different directions. Um, so for those of you guys that have tuned in, I hope you've learned a little bit about um, just what bioscience biotechnology is. Um, obviously, how many different directions you can go into. Um, if you have any questions about pursuing education or training um, or learning more about what kinds of careers are involved, please feel free to obviously reach out to your teachers, um, but then also any of us on here, you'll have our contact information 
as well. Um, and we can, can help you in that direction. And then um, maybe if it's not biotechnology, that's right for you. Um, any of the other careers uh, that are available here around healthcare um, are, you know, great options. And we have plenty of people to point you in that direction as well. So hope you guys all have a great rest of your morning and day. And Avery, Keith, Chris, and Ruth, thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate you. Um, and I am sure we will talk to you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yes.